I'm Lance. And I'm Jeremy. And we are Hard to Master, where we take a look at games that are hard, hard to master, master, such as Fled by Ogbird Games. Fled. Now, the designer of this game is, uh, who is Mark, Mark Swanson. He is the designer of Feudum, if you remember that beautiful gem that came out a few years ago. Uh, and if you don't know about Feudum, you need to go check it out. It's a really good game. Uh, it's a heavy game, but it's a really great game. So, But Fled is not a super heavy game. This is going to be a medium, uh, light to medium weight game, and it is a tile laying game with a prison breakout theme uh, in which you play as an inmate who is trying to break out of prison or fled, flee. Uh, the fled. game is fled, but <laughs> you I'm are fleeing. Uh, and you are also trying to maybe get the other players caught. So there is a little bit of take that in this mm -hmm. game. Not a lot. Um, there and can be. There, there can, be. can be quite a bit, but we've also had a game where there was like zero, zero. take that. Yeah. So uh, it's all dependent on the players and how they right. want to proceed. But you're, once we get into talking about the yeah. game, you'll know... Or we're talking about the take that is. So the goal for Fled is to have the most points at the end of the game, and the game will end when somebody either escapes, at which point that round will be the last round, or all the tiles have been played to construct the prison layout. Because again, this is a tile laying game, and so you are laying the uh, board for the prison in which you are trying to escape, which is obviously gonna change every time you play the game. So those are the two ways to play. Now the way you're getting those points are the tiles that you are placing into your cell, which is gonna count as like contraband to boost your notoriety, let's say. But then you also are getting points for escaping. So you don't wanna just put contraband into your prison cell. You do want to try to escape. So that's the goal and theme of this particular game. But Jeremy, why don't we have you kind of explain real briefly what a turn looks like, and some of the things that you can do on your turn. Yeah, so in the beginning of a game of Fled, you're going to start with just your prison cell. You're going to have your character. You're going to have this little reference tile here. These tiles won't be here because your cell is empty. Now, you will have a hand of five tiles to begin the game with, and those are randomized in these two stacks that you'll have here. This starting tile for the yard will be here, and you'll place in turn order your... Uh, prison cell adjacent to that tile. Now in this game, you have to match archways to either windows or doors. Now doors have to connect to doors and windows have to connect to windows. And they can't, you cannot ever have a window attached to a door. So that is one thing you have to remember whenever you're placing your tiles. Now on your turn, you have to place a tile first to expand the prison because it starts with just the yard and your player cells. Now as you connect that, you need half of that tile at least to match the same terrain type. So if I wanted to place this tile here, yes, it matches with the yard and it does also match the door to the archway and that is allowed. So I place that tile, then I'm gonna take two actions and those actions require me to play a tile. Now, I have three different things I could do with that tile. I could discard the, the tile because I don't like what it is and I want to draw more tiles to have a better chance to see something that I'm going to use. And you're discarding I would put it. it. Yeah, I'd put it right over here, over here to the right side of the general and or governor general. Then they will have that tile there. Now that tile can be picked up by you or other people later when you're drawing your tiles. In addition to that action, if I wanted to, I could do that once and then do another action or I could do that twice to hopefully get better tiles. Now, other things I can do with my tiles is I could spin tiles in my hand to move if they're these purple boxed uh, tools. So this is uh, this would let me uh, razor through the uh, window. So I'd be able to move window through bars. the window with that. With the boot, I could move through an archway. And whichever side of the tile I'm in, that's how I'm moving through that. So if a an archway is adjacent to a door while well, I'm using the boot to move through that archway because right. that's the side of the tile I'm on. Now I also have a whistle and the whistle will allow you to not only move this further down, which will affect our third action, which we'll talk about in a second with contraband. It'll start here next to the general and move itself down here when whistles are played. 
and it will move and that will help you with the third action. But it also allows you to move a warder and the warder will move around the board trying to catch people. It will move up to three spaces, but it cannot move through windows. So placing your tiles in the right spot to maybe block a warder off from getting to you because there's only a window is important, especially if there's that take that element because a yeah. whistle is the most take that element in the game because you're going to be moving that warder trying to capture other people because if they do catch him, then you're going to uh, randomly take a tile from that person and you're going to, they basically can't use that on their turn. And now you're connecting it to the left side of your player aid and it shows that that player is shackled. Now a shackle at the end of the game is going to cost you one point right. for, for that shackle. Now, if you get caught again, you're going to remove that shackle and go back to your cell. But if the solitary, solitary confinement tile comes out, then you're going to go spend a turn in there, losing a turn essentially. If that tile's not out, then you just get sent back to your cell. The other thing you can do is if there's a spoon, a spoon will allow you to move up to three spaces that has a tunnel. Um, and these, you can have... that are dug out on the tiles. And you can have a gold border. So gold borders are also tools. They just allow you to move double. And that also counts for when you're trying to escape, which we'll get to. But if I have a gold spoon, well, I could tunnel up to three spaces and then up to three more spaces as long as I'm moving to a space with a hole. So uh, spoons can be very good as well. Um, then you have the shamrock. And the shamrock is a wild not only for movement, but it will be a wild in your cell, which we'll talk about. So I can use maybe a shamrock to move through a door because I need a key to go through a door. So, and we just didn't have a key tile here to show you. I could show you right here. If I had this key in my hand, I could use it to move through the door. Now, the last thing you can do with your uh, tiles in your hand is you could lay contraband into your cell like we have here throughout our game. This is how our game finished up. And like this uh, cake here. Well, the whistle is on the tile that has uh, the cake on it. It also has a button. So if I'm in the mess hall room and I had this cake in my plum cake in my hand, I could attach it if I didn't have three tiles there already. Because you can only have three tiles over there. Unless you unless add you a, a shamrock. Shamrock. And we'll talk about how you upgrade those items. But I place this uh, plume cake in here. Now that's an item that I could trade up for tools later. And I can only do that because the whistle is here and I'm in the mess hall. I can't put a comb or a stamp because the whistle is not in the right, right spot and I'm not in that room. And it's important to note that you change these every time you play the game, so that's going to add some variability. It, yeah, those will be randomized, but then when you play that whistle, we talked about moving the water. That's also how this whistle moves, which would create new contraband that you can find in these different rooms. So in the next one, if it moved there and I was in the washroom, well, then I could attach a comb to this right side of my board. Again, you're limited to three spaces unless you were to put a shamrock. Now, how do you upgrade to these tools, shamrocks and things? Well, if you're in a warder's quarter, which is this type of tile, these uh, tannish brown spaces, then I could swap, um, and this tells you right here on your player board, your reference, I could swap a contraband to place a tool. If I had a gold tile, like I showed you earlier with this spoon, well, it would cost two contraband. So if I had a button that I had in there earlier and a plume cake, well, now I could discard these two to put that spoon in. Now, the other way that you can put, uh, upgrade these tiles, and uh, when I'm doing two, I could also do that. That's how I put a shamrock in, mm -hmm. is the same as a gold by getting, re getting rid of two contraband. Now, if I'm not near a warder's room, but the chaplain is out, well, he's a sympathetic person. He's going to help you uh, either to get right unshackled there. because he can remove your shackle, or he will allow you to do that upgrade and trade those contraband items for a tool. Now, you need tools because tools are how you're going to escape. If I was right here, this tile here shows that I need to have a key in there. 
only one if the whistle is on the night space. And that night space is going to change every time one of these tiles comes out with the moon on it. So if the whistle is on the moon tile, well, I only need one key, but if it was here, I would need two keys. Because it's daytime. Now the good thing here is I have a shamrock, which can act as a wild, and a key. So I would, if it was my turn, be able to escape because I have the key that I needed and the two keys if it's not the night. Now, escaping is good because that gives you five additional points at the end of the game. You'll flip your tile over here and show that you've escaped in your cell, meaning you'll get five points. Now, there is a reminder on this uh, yard tile that shows that you get five points if you escape, four points if you have a gold in your supply, three points if you have a shamrock in your supply, uh, in your cell, two points for every tool, and then one point for each contraband. So you would add all that up and see what your final total is. And that's pretty much it. The yeah. game, again, will end until one person uh, escapes and then everybody else gets one more turn. Or if a player cannot draw up to their five tiles, because at the end of your turn, you'll be drawing up to five tiles. And again, you could take tiles from the governor. Um, but that's pretty much yeah. how you play Fled. So uh, all in all, it's a, what I would consider to be a light to medium weight game, probably more leaning on the medium weight just because of the several different little nuances with the ways, ways you have to move throughout the board and, and how you could you know try to manipulate other players by moving around the warders or how you, the warders can't go through the windows like the inmates can. And, and that just little small details that maybe your casual gamers might not pick up on that lends this to be more of a medium weight game. But uh, solid tile laying mechanics here because the board's going to change every time you play the game. And so you do have that variability where you can't just uh, you know, pigeon yourself, pigeonhole yourself into the same strategy every time you play this game. You're going to have to adapt to the way the board mm -hmm. develops, to the hand of tiles that you mm -hmm. have, to what other people are doing, because you're constantly keeping an eye out for mm -hmm. what the other players are doing, because, you know, they can escape it on in any mm -hmm. given turn. Once they have the stuff they need, they can get out of there. And if you're not set up to go as well, you're probably not going to win the game. So... And, Here, and we know that that the rules overview might have sounded a little confusing at times. Even going through the rule book, there were things that I was clarifying. And this is all a prototype, so yeah. as you see it, things will get even more clear and even better. But the more you play this game, the more the strategies reveal themselves, the much yes. easier and quicker the game plays, and the more you can you know, figure out what you want to do. You realize, I don't want to just put all these exits out, mm -hmm. because then people can plan for what, how they're going to escape. Yeah. You want to let that one or two uh, exits get there, and then start manipulating the tiles right. in your hand and in your cell so that you can make that escape. Again, it, the take that feel is going to be different depending on the, the people you play and how they read the board as far as if they can move through those windows, doors, or archways. Um, and again, the warder can't move through the windows. So if you position yourself one away from that three, well, you might have caused someone to use that whistle tile in a yeah. different way than to actually you know, try to get you shackled. And then you can you know, move them right back because you had a whistle tile to... So there, there's a lot of different ways that you can manipulate yeah. your tiles. You'll notice the board layout's going to be different every time. This game, in this two-player game, we just finished. We all went this every, way. Everything <laughs> went this way. I built a little bit over here, but I knew that I didn't want to deal with more warders. Yeah. So I just kind of built, you know, over here, knowing that this was going to be the escape path. How, where am I going to be able to get the contraband I need and manipulate it in my cell so that I can get the tools or the, sh the shamrock and different things to try to escape? There are two things about this game that I think I really like the most about it. The first is, is that it, it feels like it has the right degree of restrictiveness with this game because you can't just freely move about the, the prison. I mean, it is a prison mm -hmm. and you are an inmate, so mm -hmm. it's not like you can just you know skip through the hallways and everything. And, and so, 
moving is a little bit difficult, but I enjoy that aspect of it because it's, it's a challenging puzzle that I have to figure out mm -hmm. of how do I efficiently use my tiles to get to the places I need to be while still scoring sp uh, points with my other tiles. And so that might mean that I don't have tiles that are going to score me points and I need to get rid of those tiles to get other tiles in that could score me points. So I like the degree of restrictiveness with this game. And the other thing about this game that I, I, I do enjoy quite a bit is that there are opportunities to try and catch other players in bad spots. And so we mentioned that there's a little bit of take that, or there can be more take that, or there can be very little take that mm -hmm. in this game. And I like the fact that the, the, the take that aspect of this game re does require strategic thinking. It's not just a dumb luck. I pulled this card and boom, I'm playing it and it completely disrupt all, disrupts all your mm. plans. And I didn't have to work for that. I just lucky grabbed this tile. You actually have to plan out how you are going to be able to attack somebody. And, and the timing of it is important too because you don't want to move this whistle and hurt somebody else by moving it off of something that they're going to be scoring points on if it means that it's also going to hurt you or if it's going to move a warder into a spot that's not so advantageous for yourself. There's just things you have to think about and I enjoy those aspects of this particular tile laying game. It's neat how you know, all the tiles go together too because you'll you'll get one that you have the same terrain but the window and the door doesn't line up but then you get out here and whenever you do the forest which is where you escape and you're going to need those that specific type of tool in your your cell here mm -hmm. that's exactly six from the center space so one two three four five six we've got this and then it builds around as a border to the right. But the you're prison. never going to completely build the prison. Like the game, yeah, you'd run out. Of you'll tiles run out of tiles, first. and the game is going to end more than likely. Before. But you might have one forest area here, another one yeah. here, another one here, another one here, because of how the board is built yeah. up. And it's just that's neat how all the yeah. tiles kind of go it, together. It and you have to decide. You know, when you have those five tiles in your hand, one of it you may want to use all five to do stuff and you're only going to be able to use two this turn mm -hmm. but and you want to use the others later and you're playing it two or three turns ahead like me but you always have to play that one and then you get one that's better well you could have used them all but i have to always build the prison and that's your first thing that you do and you have to do it and you you know there is luck involved in the tiles you get there is i mean it's a no different than a card game or a tile sure. game you get the ones you get um, it's just how can you bypass that by drawing what's face up here and at times there's none face up there So you just have to take a chance with the tiles and you know You might be at the end of the game and have everything here you need, but you can't draw the tile well Sometimes you're you know, I've watched all of prison break and at times or you know all these <laughs> prison, don't go all these prison, plan. you know shows and stuff and that's what happens yeah. and um, so you just have to have that little bit of luck in it too, right. because it's even in those movies and shows, there's not everything always goes right. And so, and I think another thing too, that we should throw in there is, is that this game does provide some theme to it. I mm -hmm. mean, it's not just a pasted on theme. There is some theming with the warders moving around and trying to catch the other players. And then also again, having to have the right tools to be able to move or to make your escape. And uh, you, there's some luck involved with getting those tools in your hand. So I like the theme and I like how the theme comes out in the game. So all in all, I think it's a very solid tile laying experience. Mm. I was glad to get to play it more than once because my feelings on the game definitely increased mm. quite a bit, even after the second playthrough of the game. And I feel like if I were to play it more and more, I would continue to increase my desire to play this game because of the little nuances that come out and the little ways that you can, you know, put together a strategy with what you're trying to do with it. It's pretty, pretty unique and clever uh, game making here with this one. So the game is Fled. It is running on crowdfunding. Soon. 2024. Soon. Very soon. Um, and so definitely go check that out. We have the link to the crowdfunding campaign down below if you'd like to check that out. And while you're down there, leave us some comments. Let us know what you think about this particular game. If you like this video, please, please, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell icon to be notified of all of our great new content. I'm Lance. I'm Jeremy. And we are Hard to Master, where we take a look at games that are hard, hard to, to master. master. We'll catch you next time. See ya!